let's feed some fish. So what they're having this morning is that's a cube of bloodworms. Those are two cubes of brine shrimp. This is smashed shrimp and tilapia. And this is cut tilapia and shrimp. These are specifically for the long ears because they're the only ones big enough to really eat them in that big a chunk. And uh, everybody else gets this. We'll start off with the little guy's tank. Hopefully we'll be able to get some shots of some of them eating. Um, in here we have the Gulf Coast Pygmy Sunfish and the Pygmy Brain Fart. Um, no, not a Pygmy Brain Fart. Um, Killifish, oh my god, pygmy killifish. They're getting some brine shrimp. Bloodworms are a little too big for these guys, so yeah, that just goes to show how small they are. A couple few pinches of brine shrimp. Let's see if we can get any of them eating. Usually, this brings the male sunfish out. Alright, I see some killifish over here in this corner. Another one. Sorry for the glare. Let me get a little closer. That might get rid of the glare. Spunny mop I just threw in there just to see if something would happen. So far, nothing. All right. Don't everybody just rush out at once. The lights have been on for a little while. Well, even the side view of the tent isn't going to produce much. You can see some of the killifish over here. Well, they'll eat when they're hungry. And here we got some juvenile black banded sunfish. I got four of them. The one that was previously in here, he uh, he, he got big enough to move over to the 75 gallon. So you'll, you'll see him in a bit. But these guys already know. They know what it means. Actually, I take that back. There's five in there, not four. They know. They know what time it is. Feed! This is a 20 long that they're in. I don't put them in with the other fish because, well, there's already enough fish in the 10 gallon. They're not the most voracious. These guys really remind me of angelfish in how, well, number one, on how they look. They have that natural or the, the that wild type kind of silver and black striping kind of deal going but also the way they swim they just kind of look like they move through the water without any effort kind of like how angels just look like they slice through water these guys kind of have the same mannerism Next we got the 75 gallon native tank. They're starting to congregate over, or at least it looked like they were, but they know it's about that time. They're getting excited. I'm gonna mix this up a little bit better before I, before I feed them. So the stocking in here, we got rainbow shiners, mountain red belly dace, orange throat darters, a pair of blue spotted sunfish, and one black banded sunfish at the moment. Let's 
Ring the bell. You see the darters already got the high ground. All right, guys. I feed these guys with the turkey baser. That way, uh, the darters can get some. If I just dropped it, dropped it all off down here, the, the shiners would eat everything before it got down to the bottom. A couple larger pieces for the blue spots. Male orange throat darter. A lot of shiner and dace just running around. Where's the? Oh, there's the other. That's the larger black banded sunfish I had. Still small, but big enough to be able to hold his own in here. Right now, you can see the head of one of the blue spotted sunfish. They. Oh, that's another thing too. <laughs> I uh, rescaped a little bit, not quite done, but as you can see, the the wood, it's the same piece of wood. I just kind of, it got really, really inundated with blackbeard algae, so I took it out, let it dry out for a while, scrubbed it off, and put it back in, and uh, put more rocks down here. Yeah, nothing, nothing earth shattering, but. Kind of like it, but I'm not done. Where's the other blue spot? I like to hide back here sometime. I oh, guess not. Here's my living room tank. Got Marvin, the avocado puffer, who never stops moving. Got four watermelon tetra, all, AKA red laser tetras. I got some Pseudomegil luminatus, a few panicories down at the bottom. Got uh, Goldie, the albino bristlenose pleco. I'm pretty sure it's a female. And I got some coolie loaches that like to hang out down here under the crypt parlor. All right, you guys have been waiting patiently. Oh, and there's a buttload of shrimp in here too. And also we'll use the tricky baser to get some food down at the bottom so the quarries and the coolies can get something. I have no idea if Marvin's a male or a female, if anyone's asking. And I've looked up to see if uh, I could find a way, but most people don't know how to sex the avocado puffers. So I'm just gonna call him Marvin. Oh, coolie sighting. Good morning. really still we won't see you I 
And those males are really red right now, just kind of hard to tell from the sun. Usually like that for the first hour or so when the lights come on. This is a tank I haven't shown in a while. It's the uh, 60 gallon breeder that houses uh, majority or all of my Amica Splendens, along with, uh, I've got a small school of dwarf chain loaches and another kind of loach that I thought when I bought it, they, I bought them as dwarf chain loaches, but as they're getting bigger and uh, slightly different pattern, they're not dwarf chain loaches. I thought maybe they were juvenile yo-yo loaches with the way the patterns were showing up. But then I happened to see somebody on Get Gills selling a loach that looked just like it and they call them Angelicus, Otia Angelicus. So whatever, I don't know, I like them. Yeah, this uh, tank has seen better days. Uh, so I kind of messed up on one of my little mini vacations when I was gone for about five days. I wanted, I woke up early and I wanted to leave before traffic got too bad, so I uh, turned on the lights. So the the timer on here is one of those ones, the, the older mechanical ones where you have this little switch that you can uh, have the lights on full, or you, it could be on the timer. And I turned it on full in the morning because the lights hadn't come on yet. And I forgot to put it back on the timer. So they had about five days and four nights of straight light. And when I got back, everything was just covered in just like black sludge and algae and stuff. And that was a little while ago. It's gotten better. And it's slowly getting even better. All right, let's stop teasing these guys. They look hungry. Get a little bit closer so you can see. So that's the Angelicus loach. And that little guy's a dwarf chain loach. You can see they're quite different. Hey, focus, there we go. And if you happen to see a Xenotoka, oh, there you are. I do have a couple Xenotoka Deodrii in here. That's the only male that I know of. I completely forgot that I had some. Nice male. They're pretty. They're not trout goodyids, but and they're not tequila goodyids, but they kind of look like a cross between both to me in a way. A little bit. Last and certainly not least are my long ears. Come on out, guys. Come over here to get it. There we go. Come and get it, guys. Come and get it. You can see how much bigger they're getting. Hank is still obviously the tank boss here, but uh, here is another one right there. Starting to catch up a little bit. Pretty sure that's another male, and I think that's another male, and then the other three smaller ones are females, I believe. Still no, no eggs from these guys. Dang, Hank. 
Shut up, buddy. They're actually playing nice with the camera today. Sometimes I've tried to do feedings and they just kind of sit like a bump on a log. Hank, knock it off. All right. Here, get some, get some. Hurry, before they come. Before they come. Get it, get it. Get it, girl. Get it. Get it. There we go. All right. Yeah, yeah, my lights aren't that great on here. I don't want to put some anything too high on here because I, I already have bad enough algae in this tank. These guys won't let anything else live in here. I've tried a couple different plecos and uh, they've murdered all of them. So yeah, not sure what I can do to No, yeah. Oh, looks like someone took a little chunk off your tail. You right there. Let's see how close I can get. I like to call these guys the North American discus just because of the color. They do get a really nice red on them and then you can see on their cheeks they have that turquoise kind of like broken line on them or yeah those lines on them. Hank first close up. <laughs> Thanks for the thumbnail, Hank. <laughs>